It's time for another travel vlog, and in this week's episode, we chose to go to Stockholm, Sweden. After just a two-hour plane ride, we landed in Sweden and took a train to our fancy hotel with an amazing view of Old Town. After getting settled, we went out on the streets and made our way over to the Old Town City streets. We passed a lot of grand buildings, including the World Trade Center headquarters. But our final destination was actually this little island in the Riederholmen Church. The island itself was very cute and cozy. The buildings dated all the way back to the medieval times, and it really felt like stepping into a time machine. You could even see City Hall from the shore. After wandering the old island, we went inside Riederholmen Church. The church is almost a thousand years old and is the final resting place of many of the Swedish monarchs. After exploring the church, we walked along the harbor until we arrived at the second Stockholm island that contained more of Old Town. We wandered through the maze of streets until we found ourselves in the famous Gamlestan, or Old Square. We then fueled up with some delicious dessert waffles and decided to hit the shops. There were lots of markets and stores hidden in all the nooks and crannies of the old city. After our shopping spree, we ate some traditional Swedish meatballs for lunch and went over to the Royal Palace. There was even a workers' protest happening at the time we went, right next to the labor rights exhibit. A 
Around the corner was one of the palace's main entrances, complete with the Swedish guards. The castle was lovely, but the view from the top was just as nice. Across the canal we spotted the parliament building and the hidden medieval museum underneath. The medieval museum was completely free and built on the ruins of the actual downtown Stockholm from the medieval time period. Many of the building's foundations and artifacts were still completely intact and on display for visitors to admire. After spending some time in the Middle Ages, we ascended to the surface once again. We checked out the Parliament building one final time before ending our first day in Stockholm with a hearty pizza dinner. We even stopped at a Swedish sweet shop on the way home. For day two, we had a quick breakfast at the local cafe before jumping on the bus and riding over to one of the museum islands. There were so many museums to choose from, but we had tickets to go and see the Vasa Museum. The Vasa is a one-of-a-kind ship from 400 years ago that sank on its maiden voyage in the Stockholm Harbor.
Due to the low salt quantity in the Stockholm Harbor paired with the freezing water temperatures, the Vasa was perfectly preserved underwater for centuries. It now sits on display in its very own museum as a frozen moment in medieval Swedish history. when the great warship, the Vasa, was built almost 400 years ago. The old royal castle stood on the heights and prosperous citizens lived in stone houses around the central square and surrounding streets. She was one of the most heavily armed ships in Europe with 64 guns on two gun decks, which could house up to 450 crew members. As a result of poor design, she was not very stable and had not sailed far when a breeze made her heel repeatedly. She healed too far, and off Beckholmen, water came in through the gun ports on the port side. But many below deck had no chance as the Vasa sank. On the 5th of September, 1628, a few weeks after the disaster, a council of state was convened. After the Vasa Museum, we grabbed a quick snack along the harbor before going to the Viking Museum. The thing was actually that being a Viking is not something that you are, it's something that you do. You go away in Viking, in one of these boats. And you can compare the term of being a Viking with actually being a tourist. Like you're a tourist when you leave your home, right? You're in tourist, you could say. And you visit other places, you maybe you trade with people. Um, and when you come, come home, you stop being a tourist. The same thing goes for being a Viking. We do not know if it came from what we, what we would call for Denmark or Norway, but some of those, not Sweden. So. <laughs> uh, but the thing is actually that Sweden, Norway, Denmark did not exist during the Viking Age. So sometimes we talk about Danish Vikings, Norwegian Vikings, Swedish Vikings. It's because they came from the places which we now call Sweden, Norway, Denmark. Um, but they came from Norway, Denmark, so to speak. And uh, the thing was that the Northerners themselves, they didn't have a written tradition really. They didn't write down their history. Uh, they spoke stories to each other and eventually like for two three hundred years later those stories got written down on in Norway but also in Iceland sometimes we call them the Icelandic sagas um, but a lot happens during two three hundred years I mean if someone tells me a story I might change it a little bit and just that's just one person to another person you can think about it traveling two three hundred years happens in that story. These comes from sometimes those who were victims of the Vikings, like Christian monks. They can sometimes exag exaggerate a little bit because they were the victims of the Vikings sometimes, so they maybe portray them as more brutal than other people like during the Viking Age. When you want to scare other people off, you could put the dragon head in front of the boat there. 
in Constantinople, uh, they portray the Vikings sometimes as being quite polite and sophisticated, with good manners. Uh, and how so? Well, they traded a lot with these people, so they wanted to portray them as business partners. Have you seen it? Especially yeah. if you're in, around in, in old time, you can see these plastic helmets yes. with horns on top. And at every soccer game, if some Nordic country is playing, you see these, these uh, plastic helmets with really. Um, this has nothing to do with Vikings at all. It actually comes from Germany. Uh, Richard Wagner, a German opera composer, his uh, costume designer wanted to use the horned helmet kind of like what you do in old Hollywood cowboy movies to show the audience who you're supposed to cheer on. Well, the ones who have wings on their helmets, uh, they are the good ones, like an angel or like Asterix and Obelix. Uh, all right, good. So sometimes you can see like Thor and Odin, also Norse gods having wings on their helmets. After our guided tour, we got to see all kinds of Viking artifacts from thousands of years ago and got to feel what it would have been like to live during that time. But before leaving the museum, we had to go into the Viking Saga roller coaster. It's all about brutality and death, but also about love. For our daughter Sigrid and Harald. I've inherited the estate for my ancestors. My family have been living here for generations, and I also had a good life at my home. Without silver, you're no ruler by anything. We need at least three barrels. Bring your best men and sail off to Kernogord with slaves and leather. Oh, blood flooding. Robbed silver. Battles that end in misfortune. Harold's journey began in Birka. He had to borrow leather and slaves from my cousin. They sailed across the sea, up the rivers, Traveled over land and along new rivers. Strong and healthy slaves! Where the flames brought Toki's spirit to Valhall, and our life back home at the farm had turned into a nightmare. Hum. We are sick and have almost no food left. But they had nothing to sell, so they couldn't buy anything. They saw Aya Sophia, the holy church of wisdom. The god of Christianity's house was like heaven on earth. They followed the rivers on to Germania's plains. Ship, over there. They're Norwegians. They're armed for combat. <laughs> Yet there's hope to save the farm and our glory. Let my sword be the raven. Look out! Behind you, Lucian! Burns. Villages, cities, and a monastery on Michael's Rock. Will you bring anything with you? Yes, Rangfried. Silver! Six barrels! Finally, they went home. Next year, we'll take Serkland, Harold. You never let me rest, Rangfried. <laughs> I bet that the Valkyries already have taken him to ball. Yes, there is surely a feast there now. And so my tale ended happily. Well, this time. The Viking Saga was a fun way to end our time at the museum. 
but what was even more fun was eating ice cream by the ocean. The last museum of the day was the ABBA Museum. The museum had replicas of all of ABBA's homes and recording studios. There was even constant music playing and lots of interactive activities, including a cover album photo booth, which kind of failed. I don't understand it. There's my picture. Time for the next artist. So going to be so standing here like this. I'm going to go to those. Okay, there's mom. I want... I think you have to stand here. <laughs> One of the most fun parts, though, was getting to perform on stage with ABBA themselves. Even if we didn't realize we were supposed to copy their dance moves. It was a really fun time. The final part of the museum was the Gold Room, and it had all of ABBA's most famous costumes and fashion pieces from all of their past performances. To finish our day on Museum Island, we went to a Michelin star restaurant. Serving me. <laughs> Yummy. And we had one of the best meals of my entire life. And that concluded day two in Stockholm. Our third day started out very similarly with breakfast at the local cafe. Since today was our final day in Sweden, we decided to keep things simple and go to the Nobel Prize Museum in Old Town. There were inventions from all the past winners on display as well as an entire exhibit on the banquet and fashion. There were many parts to the museum and even a documentary about all the past Nobel Prize winners. In Geneva, the newly formed League of Nations, a predecessor of the United Nations, is born. The fate of the refugees hopeless situation, he accepts the mission. But the war has redrawn borders in Europe and created millions of stateless refugees. In 1922, Fritjof Nansen is awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his tremendous work. He donates the entire sum 
to help the effort. Today, the UN's Work for Refugees, UNHCR, is a large organization with activities around the world. <coughs> The previous debate. Uh, uh, generally speaking, of course, is a, a happy society. With the museum thoroughly explored, we went to a famous traditional Swedish restaurant in the heart of the city. <laughs> we ate a delicious three course meal and had a really good time. Before we knew it, our last day in Sweden was over. The next morning, we got on a plane and flew our separate ways. This trip concluded my parents' time in Scandinavia. It was definitely a vacation to remember. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.